What's up YouTube, Thrift Hunter here with this week's garage sale and estate sale finds. Uh, I haven't made a video in a couple weeks so I'm going to show you all the things that I've been buying and what I've been doing. Um, I got this cool lamp. Um, I'm not supposed to be buying anything big anymore because it kind of takes up too much space to have this kind of stuff. And But this piece just, I, I couldn't leave it there. It was only $20. And uh, it's just really nice handmade, you know, uh, metal art piece. Uh, try and lift it up here. So it's a, a hanging, you know, wall lamp. So it's got the label right here. It's from the Fieldman Company. Um, it is from Los Angeles, California. Um, it's made by this art, uh, metal art kind of company. And it's got a milk glass shade, a light bulb down in there. It needs like to be rewired. It needs to be cleaned because it's filthy. Um, but this piece, I just, I couldn't leave it there. It is just super awesome. Um, so here's one of the pieces I bought at this estate sale. Um, it had some, a few little silver uh, items. And I bought this, you know, kind of hoping it was silver, but, uh, you know, I didn't really care either way. Um, so it was $18. Obviously, if it was silver, it would be, be worth more, but um, being silver-plated is, is cool, too. It's uh, this little dish. I don't know what this is. I guess, uh, I don't know, some kind of dip or something tray, mustard tray or something like that. I don't know what they call these. Um, but it's really neat, so I just, I really like the, the design of it, um, and it's got this piece up here that's like an iron cross, and it kind of looks like a bomb too, so I don't know what that, if that is an iron cross or something, like if this is from Nazi Germany, but, uh, I don't think so, I think it's just a design element there, but, um, you can see the nice wire and the little balls, right there and then the nice feet everything like that it's missing um, one little uh, hex screw but that's not a big deal um, so just kind of a neat piece I don't know uh, where it's from or how old it is um, I'm guessing it's from around that time period the 40s um, so I'll look it up and do some more research on it but you'd be surprised uh, on silver plate sometimes silver plate that's just got these really unique designs like this um, people really collect these because this is totally uh, usable you could clean this up and make it look real nice again and uh, I, I think I'll be able to sell it I got this uh, little egg here just a piece of art glass um, just a hand blown piece with the hole in the bottom it's got that nice iridescent finish um, I've sold paperweights with this, vases with this finish, like I, I've sold all kinds of different things with this iridescent design to it and uh, they always sell. People uh, really love this stuff because it's um, that Tiffany glass, like Tiffany originated or invented this uh, type of glass and you know Lowitz did it and uh, a bunch of other famous glass makers use this design so any, anytime you find this stuff, it's it's usually pretty easy to sell. Uh, it's signed on the bottom. It says, uh, I don't know. I, I looked this up, and I was able to find the artist. It's like mm, uh, Matlock or Mat Matlotch or something. Uh, and it's dated from the 70s. Um, and his stuff sells pretty well. I actually saw a few of these eggs um, for like 30 bucks, 35 bucks. So... Um, I might ask a little bit more and just sit on it, but a little piece of uh, art glass there. I always pick that stuff up. I got this uh, small, just cross kind of gift set. Um, not a very expensive piece at all, but it was only $2 at a garage sale. Um, it comes with ink cartridges. I mean, for 2 bucks, no problem. And it's got a price tag on it, original MSRP of $50. So I don't know, if I can get like 25 bucks for this and ship it out, I mean that's still a decent uh, little profit there. Um, here's just some 
little jewelry I picked up today. This jewelry as is, $6. Um, I pretty much buy any bag of jewelry I ever see. Because you never know what you're going to find in them. This bag was small enough that I could look through it um, before I bought it and know, you know, what I was buying. And to see if it was worth it or not. Um, it's mostly junk. But a couple of pieces that I did notice was this piece silver earring from smart sterling on the back just nice garnet piece um, really nice uh, quality garnets in there just a single earring uh, no big deal there but uh, just one of the pieces that was in there that was kind of neat uh, single turquoise silver earring and mainly why I bought it was this um, Pearl. It's Mark 14 karat. It's five or 585 on the stem, and it's got a little bit of gold here, and it's actually a pretty decent quality pearl. Um, it needs to be cleaned, but um, between this and the the little silver pieces uh, and all this junk stuff, it's kind of for free. Here's a cool little. This is fake turquoise, not. Or that howlite stuff that's just been dyed and whatever. A uh, little piece that may be silver on a piece of leather. So, you know, uh, for six bucks, it's not bad. It's not great, but um, it's not bad. So I picked that stuff up. Uh, for a few dollars, I picked up these um, little charms here. These are all uh, Judith Ripka charms. Let's see, Judith Ripka, Thailand, 925. Little, uh, there's like a bunch of these, but um, Judith Ripka stuff's pretty expensive. These are just small little charms, but nice little lot of these. I imagine like they would put a retail price tag on these of like 30 bucks a piece or something. Um, I'm not going to get hit anywhere near that, but you know. I'll get a little bit of money for them, maybe like 30 bucks for the, the lot of them, maybe more. Um, but pick those up for a few bucks. Also got a small sterling heart pendant. Um, I picked up a little bit of costume jewelry, just the stuff that I thought was nice. Um, this one, very cool. It's got a signature on it there um, I don't remember what it says oh yeah that one's really hard to see I think it's uh says R-E-D-O 1962 um, I don't know if this piece is actually from 62 or if it's just like a you know model after a piece from 62 but pick that up um, this piece is actually really cool Nice um, pin. This one's got no signature. It could be a Juliana piece. Um, you know, because you get that. They always say, oh, the figure eight. Um, the way that these rhinestones are connected together is kind of like sort of an indicator of Juliana. There are other people that did that, like Weiss and, and others. Um, but just the design of it tells me that it's a, a pretty high quality piece. These are all hand painted and then the prong setting. So you know this is a quality costume jewelry piece. Picked that up for a few dollars. Um, this was at a kind of like a horse sale. You know, they had a bunch of equestrian items, if you will. Um, very cool little uh, like Damascene or there, there's a name for this um, kind of design these stones I have no clue what these stones are I've looked at them and looked at them and looked at them they look like amber carnelian something or other um, I have no idea or they could be just glass um, like this one's two colors but I have, I have no clue what these uh, stones are but it's got no markings. I'm guessing it's silver. I haven't tested it yet, but I mean, it looks like it's it's probably silver. 
Um, but yeah, a really nice little piece I picked up there. The same sale. Um, this piece was like $15, I want to say. Um, sterling silver uh, lucky horse belt buckle. It's got markings right here on the crossbar. This is 925. Um, I saw two of these sold. One sold for like 30 bucks and one sold for like 70. So I don't know, somewhere in between 40 to 50 bucks or up to 60 or 70 this is what I'll be looking for for it. But um, pretty cool piece there. A China 925CZ. Um, anytime you find these, um, just make sure to test them. I've had a couple of fake ones before. Um, obviously, I didn't pay much for this. Sometimes they are silver. Um, for as far as like the amount of silver in here, I mean, if you were to really like, I don't know, beat on this and take out all the stones, there'd only be like seven or eight grams of total silver in here, if it even is silver. But eh, little CZ bracelet there. Picked up this. Um, Lemon fork or pickle fork. Pretty cool. It's marked on the back. Sterling and something else. It's from Denmark. Denmark, uh. I don't know. I can't read it, but I looked it up. You can probably see it. Some famous Denmark designer. Doesn't matter. Picked this up for a few dollars. You can get like 15 to 20 for it, maybe if I list it by itself. Probably won't. There's that. Um, here's a an interesting piece. I just saw sterling and bought it right away. Um, but it is marked right here. Maybe you can see it. Tiffany and Co. Sterling. And I was like, what the heck is this? Like, it's got to be for a key. Like, I figured it was a cigar lighter key or something like that, tabletop. But it's a toothpaste tube roller. Uh, everybody that I talked to thought that was kind of funny because it's like, why would you buy something this expensive just to squeeze an extra 20 cents out of your toothpaste tube? Kind of doesn't make sense, but... Anyway, these bring about 30 to 40 bucks. Um, it's got the monogram, so that hurts it, but a little piece of Tiffany for a couple dollars. Picked up these uh, picture frames. These are all miniature sterling silver picture frames. I'll pull out one of them here. So you can see, this is probably the nicest one. It says, uh, what is it, where is it made? Made in Holland. Um, that one's pretty cool. Mark 925, it's got the little easel part there. You can slide a picture in. There's kind of a example. I don't know if this, I don't think this is someone's actual picture. It's just a piece of paper. But, um, I paid three bucks a piece for these. Here's another one. Pretty nice. Um, these you, you can get like 20 to 25 bucks a piece, maybe more for that uh, nice one, but you know, they're all marked sterling. That one there, and that one there. If someone obviously was, you know, pricing these, trying to sell them at some point, but sold them to me for cheaper, so. Um, pretty cool, a little lot of sterling silver picture frames. Um, actually, I think I've got one more somewhere I'll go grab it so I found some more stuff um, that I bought that I wanted to show you um, I don't know if I showed this stuff before it's been a few weeks so it's kind of hard to remember what I've showed and what I haven't um, but I bought some rocks at a, at a state sale um, so this one said uh, you know emerald and ruby um, and, and just want to just give a quick little um, lesson about this stuff. So, mostly what I look for is opal. 
Um, Opal is like the main main rock, like in a rock collection that I would look for. Um, emeralds and rubies are cool too. Um, I'll try and buy those if I see any. These two you won't see as often. Um, but opal you can find and, and people will miss it and have no idea um, to buy it or whatever. Not that these are like crazy expensive, um, any of them. But I just want to show you kind of some rough stones what this stuff looks like um, before you make it into jewelry. Um, this one I was working on um, and it cracked on me. Um, which is sad, like it was going to be kind of this nice um, opal, but uh, still still okay. I mean, these things do crack when you're dealing with a rough stone. Um, maybe, so these are rough, so you, it's kind of hard to see, but just give it a little bit of rub, some water. And you can see the, hopefully you can see the color. So this whole thing's got... Um, a pretty decent color I was working on. Maybe s potentially making some jewelry, you know, maybe, maybe. Someday in the future, making my own jewelry pieces. So I was kind of fiddling around with this since I only paid a few dollars for it. But there's that little chunk. Here's this one. You can see it better in, you know, in better lighting with some a better polish on it. It would clean up real nice, but there's a little bit of color there. Here's another small piece that I was messing with. It's got just a little bit of color in it. And uh, this one is uh, much larger, but you can see um, where there's just all these divots and, um, you know, dirt pieces. Um, so that's why it's so hard to get um, an actual uh, cab like out of an opal. So something like rough like this would be worth a lot less than something that's a cab because a cab means you found a section of a rock like this that you could get a total piece out of that ha all has color. Um, so this is a little piece of white opal. Again, you can't really see how much color this has but it does have a lot of fire in it but it's pretty rough since I've been kind of grinding on it but there's like some nice pieces in here color probably can't see but you know you get these holes and stuff it's like where are you gonna oh there you go a little bit of color there you can see catching the light right um, so yeah, a little cool piece of opal. Um, that's what it looks like rough. Here is the emerald pieces, um, which is like kind of hard to explain to people. It's like, oh, these are emeralds, and pe everybody thinks of an emerald as like something, you know, really sparkly and shiny and stuff. But this is what they look like um, when it's not gem quality. Like these are non gem quality pieces. This has like some, you know, little iron or silver or little ore in there. Um, very cool. I don't know if I can find a piece that really shows the, uh, what the difference is. There was a piece that had a little chunk of gem in it. Here, like this one, a little bit more. So what you're looking for in, in a, like, say you were trying to buy some rough emerald, You'd want something that had more of this gemmy look to it. See how that's got more of a clear crystalline shape to it? I know, my camera is just, oh, it's killing me. But like like this little chunk here is a nice little crystal. And that's more of what you would be looking for in, in a big piece that was transparent and, and had good color like that. So, but But rough, it just looks like like this one, or it's just, you know, there's no crystal there, or hardly any, but this piece has like a little bit in it. So that's the emerald. Here are the little rubies. Again, like this one, very rough. Um, not much gem quality to it, but this one actually has a little bit more gemminess to it where it's got a little bit of 
crystalline in there and good color and a little bit of clarity whereas these two are much darker um, not as transparent again not to uh, you can see the difference between this stone and these two stones it's much nicer this you could actually you know maybe 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 cut into a little baby uh, earring or something like that but um, again not much value here but just cool like this is what a natural gemstone looks like none of that CZ heat treated junk that you find all over the place these are actual real stones that's why they cost so much like look at how tiny these rubies are you need to get a piece that is like you know way way bigger just to cut a stone like an actual cut stone that would be like this big you know that was actually cut and faceted and everything you need to start with a much bigger stone um, but this is what you look for in when you're looking at stones inside of a piece of jewelry you want to see something that's got color gradation it's got inclusions, um, it's not clear and see-through and all the same color, um, it's going to be more natural like these are. So there's my little rock lesson for the day.